everyone, it's Sarah, and welcome to my crochet channel. So today's video is our washcloth number seven, because it's our July washcloth of the month for our crochet along for 2020. And just in case you don't know what we've been doing this year, is each month I'm releasing a new washcloth. Some are square, some have been round, one has even been ziggity zaggity. <laughs> well, anyway, once a month I am releasing a new washcloth pattern with a new stitch so we can make a washcloth and learn a new stitch. Well, today's washcloth is the block stitch pattern, and it's one of my favorites. It's super easy, so it's not going to be a really hard project this month but I think you're really going to love the way that they turn out. Now this one I did in green and some Christmas variegated and I'll talk more about yarns in just a few minutes. Now it measures about 10 by 10 so it's a nice size washcloth but if you want to adjust it you can find those multiples and stitch counts on my blog and you'll also find that free crochet pattern that's always free and always on my blog and you'll find that link down in the notes underneath this video. The yarn that I used for this one that has the Christmas variegated in the green, these are all made with Crafter's Secret cotton and it's 100% cotton and you can find that at Hobby Lobby. But you don't have to use that particular brand of cotton if you don't want to. You can use any cotton that's a medium number four yarn. Now I do have a friend who prefers to make her washcloths out of acrylic and she just likes the way they work and if you want to make it out of acrylic if that's your preference again medium number four weight yarn. I'm going to be doing these fall colors this color I think is called papaya and this is just autumn gold I believe and you can find those at Crafter's Secret like I said. Now, to make one of these washcloths, you're going to need about an ounce of two different colors. So if you want to make it all one color, which you can, you need about two ounces. All right, we're going to use our H hook today, which is a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need a needle just to weave in those ends and your scissors. We're going to begin with our slip knot, and we're going to chain three chains. We're going to be stitching 30 foundation half double crochets. Yarn over, go in the third chain, and pull up a loop. Yarn over and only go through the first loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and go through all three. That's our foundation half double crochet. Now we'll go in the chain that we made, pull up a loop, Yarn over, only go through that first loop. Yarn over and go through all three. And so we're going to be stitching 30 foundation half double crochets. Now, if you prefer to stitch a chain and turn and stitch a row of half double crochets, you can do that to begin this washcloth. I just prefer the foundation half double crochet because it makes a nice stretchy edge on my washcloth. And so I'm going to stitch 30 foundation half double crochets. Yarn over, go in the chain that we made and pull up a loop. Yarn over, go through the first loop. Yarn over and go through all three loops. So I'm going to stitch 30 foundation half double crochets. I've stitched my 30 half double crochet foundation stitches. I'm going to chain one and turn. Our chain one does not count as a stitch and so we're going to begin by placing a single crochet in those first two stitches. One and two. 
Now we're going to chain three. We're going to skip two stitches and single crochet in the next. And this is how our repeat for this row will work. We're going to chain three. We're going to skip two and single crochet in the next. Chain three, skip two, and single crochet in the next. And we'll repeat this across. two, three, chain, uh, chain three, skip two, single crochet in the next, chain three, skip two, single crochet in the next. We end on chain three, we skip two, and we're going to have two single crochets on the end. And of course that last one's in that first chain three. We'll go ahead and chain one just so you can see that. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Chain three, skip two with the single crochets. And then of course we have two single crochets at the beginning and two single crochets at the end. We're going to take that chain one out and we're going to change color. So I'm bringing in this rust color, I believe it's called papaya. And we're going to leave our color one attached. We're going to grab our color two and chain three. One, two, and three. Make sure everything's snug down there. And we're going to turn. On the row with the chain three, it does count as our first double crochet. And so we're going to double crochet in this next single crochet. Now we're going to place three single crochets in this chain three loop. And we're going to do this all the way across, stitching three double crochets in each of those chain three loops or chain three spaces. Just go to the next one and stitch three double crochets. Then we'll go to the next one and stitch three double crochets. And we'll repeat this all the way across our row. I've stitched those three double crochets in each of those chain three loops or chain three spaces. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sets. And this brings us to those two stitches on the end of our row and we're going to place one double crochet in each of those two stitches and chain one and that's the way row three should look. We're going to chain one and turn. Now again our chain one does not count as a stitch and so we'll go in and stitch a single crochet in that first and second stitch we're going to chain three and we're going to place a single crochet between the next two sets of three double crochets. Chain three, single crochet between the next two sets of three double crochets. One, two, three, chain three and single crochet between the next two sets. And we'll do this all the way across this row. And so we're forming those little chain three loops or chain three spaces again like we did down here. And so you're going to have nine of those chain three spaces. Here's our last single crochet between these last two sets of three double crochets. 
and so we're going to go to the last two single or the last two double crochets and stitch a single crochet in each of those. There we go. And in that chain. All right, and so that's the way that row four should look. And now we're getting ready to change colors back to our color one. And so we're going to bring in our color one. Snug that down, make sure everything's nice and tidy. And now we're going to chain three and turn our work. And your, your yarns might get a little twisted, just keep sort of gently pulling them out as you've seen me do. But we don't want to cut these yarns. And when we're finished, we'll come back around and we'll stitch over those with some half double crochets. All right, so our chain three here counts as our first double crochet. So we're going to double crochet in that next single crochet. And then we're going to, again, do three double crochets in each of these chain three spaces or loops, whatever you want to call them. So we'll stitch three double crochets, some yarn out here, in each one of those spaces that we made with our chain three loops. <laughs> Get a little twisted there. All righty, so we're stitching three double crochets in each of those chain three spaces or chain three loops, whichever you want to call them. And we'll do this all the way across, just like we did on that previous row where we did the other ones. And I think you're starting to see how the pattern works. So I have stitched those three double crochets in each of those loops. And again, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here's my last double crochet in that last group. And then I'm going to stitch one double crochet in those two single crochets at the end of the row. And chain one. And so now for row six, we've done our chain one and we're going to turn and we're going to repeat what we did down here. One single crochet in the first two stitches. One, two, chain three, and single crochet between the next two sets of three double crochet. Chain three, single crochet between the next two sets, chain three, and single crochet between the next two sets of three. And we'll repeat that all the way across that row. So I stitched it across. We have nine loops. Here's my ninth. And I'm going to single crochet in those last two stitches. There we go. And of course, I'll change colors again. And so what we're going to do is we're going to continue to repeat row three and row four, which is what we did here. We repeated row three and row four. And we'll do this for 16 more rows. And you'll alternate the rows, and then you'll alternate the colors every two rows. So we're repeating rows three and row four for 16 more rows. So I have repeated for 16 more rows, alternating the rows and stitching every other two rows in every other color. And that's what gives me the striping effect for my washcloth. Once you get, this will be row 20, and once you get there, you're going to need to cut your color two and bring in your color one 
and we're going to need to do one more row of the three double crochets in each of the chain three spaces. So double crochet, then double crochet in the next, there we go, and then three double crochets in each of those chain three spaces just like we did before. We want to end with this because this is going to give us a nice even place to place our trim on. Alright, so I'll go ahead and finish row 21, which is three double crochets in each of those chain three loops or chain three spaces. And then we can add our trim. So we've completed that last row. We're going to chain one and turn. And what we're going to do is we're going to place a half double crochet in each of those stitches across. So yarn over, go in the first stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, and go through all three of those loops. And we're going to place one half double crochet in each of the double crochets across. Oops, got a little string there. There we go. Cotton yarn does have a tendency to be a little bit stringy. Alright, so I'm just going to work my way across the top of my washcloth, stitching one half double crochet in each of these double crochets across. I have half double crocheted across the top. I'm going to place two more half double crochets in this corner so it moves smoothly around the corner. And now we're going to half double crochet down the side. And this is the side where we carried all that yarn. And so we're going to try to stitch over those yarns and cover them up. and it'll give it a much neater appearance if we can stitch over them. And of course, it'll help the washcloth hold its shape as well. So there I went around that corner, and now I'm stitching down the side. And the key to getting a nice even side is to try to stitch in the stitches and not the holes, all right? Sometimes we may have to stitch in a hole, but we want to try to stitch in the stitches, not the holes. And we'll work all the way down the side. We'll place three half double crochets in the corner. We'll stitch across the bottom, three half double crochets in this corner, and then back up the side and join over here where we started our half double crochet trim. And as you can see, I have a knot I have to deal with. I have stitched my half double crochets all the way around all four sides, placing three half double crochets in each of the corners. Here's the last one that I did with the three corners. And we're going to join to that first half double crochet with a slip stitch. Cut our yarn. We'll go to the next loop and pull it to the back. Although with this kind of a washcloth, there really isn't a front and a back because we changed and turned and stitched back and forth. So it pretty much looks the same on the back as it does the front. All right, so I just need to take my needle and weave in this last end and my washcloth will be all finished. And you'll notice when I uh, go to thread the needle with cotton yarn, I fan out that end so I can get it flat, so I can get it right on my needle. There we go. And so I'm just going to weave this in, going through some fibers of the yarn, stitch back and forth. There we go. <laughs> and my washcloth is finished. 
and ready for me to use it. So here is the brick stitch washcloth that we made together. And here's the one that I did for our test in Christmassy colors. So this one is for Christmas washing the dishes. And this one is for Thanksgiving washing the dishes <laughs> for my husband to use. <laughs> All righty. So this is our block stitch washcloth for our July washcloth of the month.